Now live from Studio 550, it's McGraw in the morning on the Big 550 KTRS. Senator Roy Blunt is uh, joins us. Uh, Senator, thanks for calling in on what is a very uh, busy couple of months for you. Thanks for checking in. Well, good to talk to you. You know, I came by to uh, pick my, my mail up the other day at the studio, and you had moved. We are in new digs. You need to come by and check out you our know, new TV It's studios. not all that subtle. It's like your family <laughs> moves us. while you're away and doesn't tell you where they're going. I was, well, uh, that's the that's the federal <laughs> that's the federal post office's problem. We sent you the letter. You just haven't there heard you it. There you go. There you right. go. Uh, let's talk about ISIS because a lot has been said. Uh, a lot has been talked about. Where are we with this ISIS, and and, and what do you think should happen? Well, it's, it's clearly a, a problem we need to be concerned with. It is a real menace to uh, uh, our moving forward as a, as a peaceful society. The difference in where uh, this threat is and where these same types of threats has been, have been before is location. This is the old real estate's location, location, location. And where they are in Syria and, uh, and northern uh, Iraq puts them on the back door of Europe. It allows them to get into Turkey, which is a country that has uh, full access to most of the European countries. Uh, and uh, not only do we have at least, we believe, 100 Americans there fighting uh, with ISIS on the side of ISIS, but probably many times that from European countries. So that suddenly you've got uh, people who clearly are part of a vicious, unacceptable uh, movement uh, that are a passport away from coming to the United States and and. Uh, and then going to the European countries that these people have uh, come from before they uh, they joined this movement, and it's a problem, and it needs to be taken care of. And I think both our failure to understand what would happen if we didn't leave a stabilizing force in Iraq and our failure to act in the very first few days in Syria that would have given the popular uprising there a chance have sort of become the two things that uh, – come together in this witch's brew that creates this real danger for the world and clearly a danger for the people who are living there who don't agree to just go along with whatever this extremist view of the Islamic faith says you have to be part of. When does the Arab state stand up for their own country, for their own beliefs, for their own religion, right? I mean, w w the U.S. is always the first one to call, but, you know, where is Saudi Arabia? Where is where is Iraq? Where is Iran? These people are, are under the same threat we're under with ISIS. Where are they sort of trying to help solve the problem? Well, they are, and, you know, we're beginning to see what happens in a world where uh, the United States steps back. First of all, when the United States leaves a vacuum, bad things rush to fill that vacuum, but we saw Saudi Arabia and Egypt apparently without telling us, which wouldn't have happened any earlier time in, the, in recent years, uh, do uh, air raids on, uh, on Libya in recent weeks. Uh, they are likely to step up at some point and, and more likely to follow the lead of the United States and other European countries. I think the rallying, uh, the NATO support for what needs to happen here, the NATO countries are clearly at threat. Uh, but, but you're right. There is no question that others need to do more. Uh, however, if people don't do more, that really doesn't satisfactorily solve the problem. You know, in a, in a totally fair world, the Germans, the French, others would step up when uh, President Obama decides that we don't need to lead in these areas anymore. But we see that that hasn't happened, and the constant deterioration of this is a problem that is largely uh, due because of, of decisions that, that we made. and. Uh, we'll see what the president has to say about it. Yeah, he's going to speak tonight, and KTRS is going to uh, carry that uh, live. But um, he has said over and over again that he does not want boots back on the ground in uh, the Middle East. Or, do you agree with that, or do you think maybe at, at some point we, we might have to put boots on the ground? And if that came to that, would you support that? Well, you know, the president says that. I would have been for leaving some boots on the ground. This was uh, Korea or Bosnia where people have stayed since, uh, you know, Korea for since the 50s, Bosnia since the problem in Bosnia. This was not a, a place that we should had any reason to abandon. The president said when we left that Iraq was in a stable situation, and I think that was true. 
Uh, but what he didn't understand was part of that stability was not the United States active uh, military action, but it could have. But active presence made a, a difference there. And the president says he doesn't no boots on the ground, but apparently he's put two thousand boots on the ground already, a thousand pairs of boots because there are a thousand people there, roughly a thousand people that the president sent back. Uh, they're in uh, much more jeopardy than if he'd have left. Uh, more people than that whenever we left, as the military uh, said we needed to do and, and as I thought we needed to do. But there are people there, so I don't know what the president's talking about when he says no boots on the ground. Uh, I, I, I hate to see us re-engage there, and uh, it would be great if whatever we do, we can do uh, from the air and as part of a coalition. But uh, we'll just have to see. The president is the commander-in-chief, and uh, he, he hopefully by now begins to have a strategy. That's not a message you ever want to send to the world, even if it's uh, not true. And by the way, I I think the president has had the authority all the time to do what he needs to do there. If he, he wants to come to Congress, that would probably be the smart thing to do to get congressional buy-in. Uh, but I, my personal belief is that the 2001 and the 2003 authorizations against terrorism uh, allow him to do whatever he needs to do. Uh, if he asked me, what should I do? I said, well, if I was you, I'd come to Congress and get uh, congressional buy-in so you're not doing this all by yourself. But uh, I think the president has had, has and has had all the time he's been president the authority to do what needs to be done to fight the terrorist threat. So if he went to Congress and went to the Senate, you would vote with him and in favor of doing whatever is necessary? Well, it depends on what, what the plan is. You know, the president has some obligation here to present a plan to the Congress. I, I don't believe he's going to come to the Congress. I don't think he has to come to the Congress. But if I was him, I would want the Congress involved so that uh, whatever happens, uh, this is not going to an easy thing to deal with. And uh, whatever happens at the end of the day, uh, he's done his best to rally support of the American people through the Congress. And there's no better way to express that support. Uh, than, to, than to require the Congress to right. vote, but I, I would be surprised if that's what he does. Senator, last question for you. Uh, elections around the corner, Republicans have a real chance to uh, take back the United States Senate, which would change your life dramatically. What are you hearing on the inside? What's the percentage that your party takes back the Senate? You know, the, all, there are a number of uh, things out in the last few days. I'm, I'm not a great... Uh, political predictor of what's going to happen, but generally uh, the things that have been out this week have said that the odds are somewhere in the in the 65 percent range, which is sort of where we I thought we were the last time you and I talked about this, but it's still there are a number of days between now and Election Day. Lots of things can happen, uh, but it, it uh, the obligation if Republicans take over the Senate will be to show that Republicans are prepared to be a governing majority if joined by a president in a couple of years rather than Republicans just want to be a complaining majority. I think people are tired of seeing the dysfunction of the government. They're tired of seeing the Senate not doing the work of the Senate in a public uh, and open way. And if uh, Harry Reid's not the majority leader uh, in January, I think the principal reason will be that people are, are tired of the Senate not doing its job. And so the new Senate had better take uh, take heed that uh, the, the goal here is to do what's necessary for the country to be uh, run openly and uh, decisions to be made in a way that people expect them to be made so that they understand uh, what happens in a democracy. Senator Blunt, we'll leave it there. You're always welcome to come to our new studios, though you still have to pick up your mail at the old KTRS studios. All right, now that I've got that straight, I hope to see you at the new studios. <laughs> before too long. Senator Blunt, safe travels. Thanks for checking in.